Hi there, I'm Hannah Brown, Head of Content at eResidency, and welcome to my little video passion project, Conversations with eResidents. If you're enjoying this project, please like, subscribe, and comment on this video below. In this video, I spoke with Federico Pirola, an entrepreneur based in Italy. He's been an e-resident since 2015, making him one of our earliest adopters. Federico is a partner at Emerald Foundry, which he says wouldn't exist without e-residency. He co-founded Emerald Foundry last year with two fellow e-residents who live in Bulgaria and South Korea. Emerald Foundry provides strategic consultancy services to startups and small businesses. Its objective is to help unlock the potential of the people working in these enterprises and to leverage the broader business ecosystem for growth. In the interview, Federico and I cover a broad range of topics from his e-residency story all the way up to his unique entrepreneurial perspective. So please watch and enjoy this fourth video in our new series, Conversations with e-residents. Hi, Federico. It's so nice to have you here today on Conversations with e-residents. Let's start with uh, the first question. Um, I'd love to hear about your entrepreneurial background and what has led you to become the founder and entrepreneur that you are today. Hi, Anna. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. And hello to all the viewers uh, out there. Um, my entrepreneurial background is uh, pretty simple. Actually, I have a uh, quite long corporate career, so I'm not a... a an entrepreneur by birth, let's say. Um, I've been in uh, wealth management and in IT organization and several roles in a, in a large corporation. And then at some point, I decided that I wanted to uh, do something different, let's say. And uh, uh, that's how I became a, an entrepreneur in the end. Um, that's my, my journey in a sense. And somewhere along that journey, you found out about your residency and um, and started a company in Estonia. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that to tell the audience how how it is you're an e-resident and, and mm -hmm. what you're doing here in, in Estonia. Well, e-residency for me, uh, that's actually, how to say, uh, without it, uh, this transition to from corporate career to uh, being an entrepreneur, would not have been possible at all. Um, it started, my relationship with e residency started actually uh, six years ago, I think. So it was, I was one of the early adopters, let's say. The originals, yeah. Yep. Yes. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the original uh, use case, let's say, there was um, um, related to having a holding company, in a sense, to, to do some alternative investments. Um, then, uh, over time, I got more into the, uh, in the ecosystem, into the in relation with uh, uh, also other residents. And um, at some point in time, I decided that I wanted to uh, give back to the community somehow, to, to do something for the community uh, of your residents. And uh, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, how uh, the idea came of starting a uh, venture capital fund dedicated to uh, to your residents so that, that was the original idea at least <laughs> <laughs> I remember when when you had the idea because we did a blog post about it which I can link here and um, you did a survey in the community and it was quite exciting for us at e-residency yeah uh, it is still a super super exciting idea um, and uh, and and an idea, by the way, that uh, is also needed. So, in in a sense, so uh, you mentioned the survey we did back at the, back uh, in that those days, and what came out is actually was actually that uh, uh, most of the people needed uh, a access to capital as much as they needed access to uh, competences and contacts. That's so right. These are the the. What I call the three C's of of uh, what a, an entrepreneur needs to to uh, to thrive with with their company. So, so yeah, th there is definitely there, there is uh, definitely a need for that. There is a space for that. Um, it's actually not so straight straightforward, and um, so maybe here uh, 
there is a little bit of a story to uh, to be told around uh, around this idea of uh, how it developed because in the end um so together with uh, my partners uh, Rosen and Ian who are also uh, in residence uh we decided to uh step back a little bit from from this idea and uh start developing in another direction sooner or later we will get back to that uh so it's just a uh, a transition somehow um but but the point is simply that um, to set up a vc you need to be able to handle someone else's money and to do that you need trust mm -hmm. and uh before that you need to build up this trust obviously so which we didn't have we are we were a, a new player and uh it's a completely new idea in this space in the space so it's new for the residents it's new for estonians as well so we stepped back a little bit and we said okay let's start by helping entrepreneurs uh we have a lot of uh, uh managerial and and entrepreneurial experience all, uh, combined so uh, let's help the others grow their business so that they are ready to uh, face also the, the investment uh, uh, part of their uh, of the entrepreneurial journey. So they're, they're facing, inter facing angel investors, facing VCs and other sources of funding. And from there, we start building up the, the trust and, and the uh, um, community that can support this, uh, the, the idea of establishing a VC fund. So long-term game is there still. <laughs> That's really good news. Um, but yeah, this this sort of idea of, of transitioning or, or pivoting, I think that's quite an interesting one. You said that there was a little story there. So maybe you can uh, enlighten us a little about that that decision to, to, to pivot your focus with Emerald Foundry. I think that, uh, and this is also a little bit of a uh, probably a small advice uh, that I can give uh, to others just based on my experience, on, on our experience, is that sometimes uh, you uh, you need to be in love with your idea, but not with the way you can achieve it. Mm -hmm. Because the way you can achieve it uh, uh, can be different and maybe um, it can be uh, in a different point in time, let, let's put it in this way. So having a long perspective is also very, very important in, in what you're in what you're doing. Sometimes uh, if the straight if the straight road doesn't work because it doesn't lead you where you want to go, uh, it's better to take a longer road, uh, take some side steps, sometimes even a step back uh, with uh, um, sometimes a little bit of uh, you need to swallow your pride a little bit sometimes because you know when you are in love with your idea, uh, sometimes it's not uh, easy to to give it up somehow, um, but yeah, that's that's uh, uh, the 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 advice in the end. So sometimes you really need to be humble and uh, uh, play it uh, in a in a long term in the long term and uh, take also be uh, have the strength to take also some side steps. But the sort of the core behind your thinking about the three C's, that's still there in, in how you're operating, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's always there, actually. Uh, it's more like, it's kind of the, the general framework of it. So these are the, always the three things that uh, entrepreneurs need. We're just now focusing maybe a little bit more on the competences and contacts side of things. That lead you to capital as well. You know, it's it's uh, there is always a little bit of a chicken and egg game with uh, with funding. So mm -hmm. very often entrepreneurs think think that uh, uh, money can solve every issue and and uh, make their business super successful. If only I could get that a hundred k or or one million or whatever it is. In most of the cases, it's actually the other way around. So first, you need to make your business uh, uh, look good uh, to a certain, to a certain, up to a certain point, let's say, uh, and then money comes, and then you can grow faster. So, so that's uh, that's the thing. But money is just an enabler to grow faster um, with something that is already working in the end. 
So what are the types of things your business uh, does with clients and, 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 and how do you consult them in practice? Uh, we can consult on, on actually a lot of things. Uh, and this is uh, uh, precisely because it's not only the three of us. So we, have, mm-hmm. we are three co-founders in our company. Uh, but we are uh, uh, working a lot on establishing a network of other partners of people that we can uh, that we can uh, uh, bring in uh, uh, um, uh, sitting at the same table so that we can jointly support the company. Uh, we believe a lot in the power of of the ecosystem, and uh, Estonia is a great place, by the way. Uh, in this, and the residency is a great place. Uh, in Estonia, there are uh, universities, there's uh, a strong investor community, uh, there are accelerators, uh, there's really, uh, there's, there are coding schools, if mm. you're interested in that yeah. space. So yeah. there's really a lot of stuff uh, in there. Uh, and obviously, also the other residents are also amazing partners that that uh, that you can get for your business and specifically going back a little bit to to what we do so the the type of consultancy we go uh, we do goes from uh, uh, strategic consultancy overall so uh, how to uh, set up your business plan how to validate your your value value proposition uh, how to build a funding plan for for um, for your business uh, how to validate your tech stack so we look also at your technological side of it of things uh we can look at your marketing side we can look at your people so understanding uh how well you fit together maybe if you have some skills or some qualities missing in your team um and so on so these, these are the, the kind of uh, uh things we look at when we look at uh, uh at the company so everything you just said there sounds like it could be super relevant and interesting for e-residents who are looking to start companies or who or have already started companies. So um, from your experience, do you have any advice uh, for these types of people who are who are making that step that you did a few years ago already? Uh, reach out. Don't be alone. Don't stay alone with your uh, thoughts, with your ideas. Uh, talk to people. Uh, as much as you can. Uh, that's uh, how you can actually refine your ideas. You can actually test them, prove them, and get support. Uh, nobody can do things alone. And even a small thing, a small team, uh, sometimes is uh, not enough. By the way, investor look, investors look a lot at the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, when you are when you are uh, looking at a startup, you are mostly investing in people uh, yeah. rather than in the more than in the, in the idea and in whatever else. You are mostly investing in the people and in their ability to execute uh, on their idea. So uh, that's a, a very important uh, uh, part of it. That's great advice. And um, the good thing for your residents is that that you're not alone. There are, you know, over 100,000 of you now. Um, there's also a great um, chamber organization that I think, Federico, you've been involved in as well, Erika. Yes, yes, um, absolutely. And, and so I recommend to your residents to have a look. I can, I can link their website below and have a look because it's a very small membership fee. I think it's a five euro membership fee. Yeah. And uh, yes. you you meet you know great people like Federico, like his business uh, found uh, co-founders as well. Um, actually, on I, that I point, met them. I met them through Erica. I was going to ask exactly that question because <laughs> yes. did you know you didn't know each other before e residency? No. Yeah. No, so, no, no. Actually, uh, we are uh, as I was uh, mentioning, we are completely remote. We are living in different countries. Uh, I'm living in Italy. Uh, Rosen is living in Hungary and Ian is living in South Korea. So <laughs> pretty uh, half the world across. Uh, so so we are really uh, in, in different places and we are uh, brought together by residency. And so. But your digital home is Estonia, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, we... Uh, try to spend as much time as possible there as well or to be there quite often, let's say, to keep the uh, relationships uh, uh, 
um, uh, with other actors of the ecosystems, attending to the main uh, uh, events like uh, startup days, like Latitude 59. Latitude 59, for example, is for us also uh, our annual company meeting because that's when uh, Ian also can can fly fly from uh, from South Korea to, to Estonia. So we all meet there. And uh, and by the way, that's also I think another piece of advice for the residents. Um, try to visit Estonia as well to to be there and to to speak with the people. Um, one thing I did not mention mention before, but it's mm -hmm. actually quite important. Um, around the topic of the ecosystem, the Estonian ecosystem, um, Estonian people are great people to do business with. Um, because they are they are very pragmatic, very open minded, very uh, frank in in expressing their opinions. Uh, they have a, a strong can do attitude. So if you come up with an idea that kind of makes some sense, um, it's it's uh, easy to find people that are willing to look into it and and, and uh, uh, work with you uh, uh, around your idea and give you also some honest feedback about, uh, about it. <laughs> yes, I, I can attest to that. They're very direct, but in a yes. very constructive way, I would say. Yes. Um, and they 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 want to help. So they the, the advice is always, you know, to help you succeed, to help you grow. Um, and they're very entrepreneurial, I think. In, I think it's in their blood or their DNA or something. <laughs> Well, uh, it's uh, there is a, there must be a reason why Estonia is the country with the highest uh, number of uh, unicorns per capita, no? Yes. Well, thank you for saying the messages for for me. <laughs> 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 so, Federico, um, this all sounds really exciting, and I know that you've been growing this project over the last year or so. So, what's what are you hoping this year brings, and what's next for Emerald Foundry? So for uh, uh, for us this year is uh, a year where we really want to to grow and to establish ourselves as a as a uh, player, and uh, we want to especially help a lot as as many people as possible. So that that's in the end our uh, the, our philosophy, our our uh, vision somehow. So we believe in a in a world that is uh, very entrepreneurial and where people can work together and achieve great things together and uh, and that's what we what we want to do and uh, that's also what we are uh, looking for 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 uh, for the coming year for this year so to um, en enlarge the group of people that uh, that we can help support and that we can work together with so we are we are always having a, a partnership approach in the, in the end in whatever kind of relation uh, either with uh, um, suppliers or people we we work together to provide some services, uh, but also with the clients in the end. And if people want to um, work with you, how can they get in touch? The easiest way is to uh, find us on LinkedIn. Uh, okay. There is also our website. Maybe Hannah, if you can uh, uh, put the links in the in the description afterwards that's of course of course yeah so i'll put those in the description so if anyone watching is interested in finding out more about emerald foundry about federico and perhaps working with with them with him and his team um yeah you can find them in the links below Thank so you. let's uh we're, we're getting to the end um uh i've got a few rapid fire questions if you're up for them mm -hmm. sure perfect okay so the first one when you're logging in with your um, for, to to do anything in the Estonian e-services environment, do you prefer using your e-residency digital ID or smart ID? Smart ID all the time. <laughs> Me too. I've always got my smart ID at the ready. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's still uh, you, you still need the physical card for some things, but otherwise, uh, smart ID. Yeah, oh I do gosh. find, though, that when I have to use the card, I feel really, oh, I, I get to use the card. I feel really excited about it for some stupid reason. But uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think eventually they will change that and you'll be able to do everything with your Hopefully. With your yeah. Looking forward to that. <laughs> um, who's your entrepreneurial or professional hero and they can be living or dead? Uh, Simon Sinek is uh, Great a guy that has inspired me a lot, to be, to be honest. So he's 
really, really inspiring. So uh, if you have ever have the chance to one evening, just skip an episode of your favorite uh, TV series and watch an hour of uh, one of his speeches. Uh, it's really, really inspiring from, from my point of view. I totally agree. I really, really love his whole philosophy around the why and, per- you know, leading with purpose. And um, yeah. he's just a very, he's he's an optimist. So he's always very positive about um, everything. So, yeah, I totally agree. And by the way, I think that he um, was a little bit ahead of time in saying these things. Mm-hmm. That, uh, But those things actually exploded during the, the pandemic. Yeah. During the pandemic. Sorry. Yes. Uh, so now people are actually realizing that uh, business is uh, not only about making money. Of course, we need to make money, but um, it's about doing something greater than yourself in the end. Here, here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, do you have a bl- podcast or a blog or a video or, or even a book recommendation for the audience? Uh, well, besides uh, Simon Sinek, as mentioned before, um, there is a, a blog that I'm reading quite often, uh, which is uh, super interesting from my point of view, even if it's totally unrelated to, to uh, um, what, I, what I do. Uh, it's called uh, Uncharted Territories, and it's uh, actually about uh, geography and about how geography uh, had an impact on uh, uh, human development. Uh, that's the most of the stuff, at least. Then there are also some side topics, but the, the, most of the of the things is uh, uh, around this, and I find it uh, really super fascinating. I love a lot. I love all the uh, all the things that are uh, helping you get a broad view on things. So mm-hmm. not only on your uh, so enlarge a little bit your mind and see things also sideways. And uh, because of this, um, uh, for the Italian viewers, I can recommend also a, a philosophy uh, podcast or actually a YouTube channel, which is called Daily Cogito. And um, one day or another, I will need to talk to this guy and, and tell him to do some stuff in English as well. Uh, he's talking about philosophy. Yes. Um, so... General advice for everyone listening is uh, get engaged with uh, uh, deep questions. Doesn't matter where your language, uh, get engaged with deep, deep questions, with uh, deep thoughts, with uh, seemingly gen- very, very uh, generic topics or the uh, so called limitless questions. So, questions that, that are open to so many possibilities, so many, so many. Uh, thoughts around them this helps you I think as a human being first of all but also as an entrepreneur uh, because that's uh, you always need to keep your uh, mind sharp let's say on on whatever is happening around you and that's a very very nice training around it that's really great advice and something that I also absolutely enjoy doing as well and topics sort of unrelated to your normal day-to-day work is is, is good because they sometimes give you a flash of inspiration or uh, some guidance about something that, you know, you, that you are doing at work that, that might help you in your career. Or, yeah. So. I find them also uh, recharging. So they are mm-hmm, mm-hmm. charging your batteries when, when you are drained. And that's also mm-hmm. like uh, completely uh, getting out your, your mind out of uh, your daily stuff and uh, focus on something different. Okay, so uh, we've got two more questions. Um, what is your preferred location and work setup? Um, I know that you're an Italian living in Italy, but you do travel a lot and you're often in Estonia. So um, you are sort of location independent in that sense. So always in my mind, I am, yeah. <laughs> let's say. So <laughs> I, I am not physically because of family reasons. So uh, it's pretty difficult to be fully digital nomad when you have a family. Um, but anyway, uh, my preferred uh, work setup is uh, work from home when I am doing my own stuff and then travel as much as possible. I, I, let's say I make an average uh, one or two uh, business trips per, per month, which is a, which is a good setup. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I love traveling anyway, so that's good. 
I think most of our audience are in the same. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The same, of the same opinion. And that final question before we um, finish off, uh, describe your connection to Estonia as an e-resident. Uh, there are several connections, uh, and uh, I think you can uh, you can uh, take most of them from actually what I've already said during this conversation. I would like to focus now on on probably the the thing that uh, uh, connected me to Estonia at the very beginning, mm -hmm. and that was. Uh, when I discovered about the residency, what what fascinated me, what really brought me in completely, was the the um, uh, the idea of the relationship between the state and the citizen mm -hmm. that is underpinning the residency. Mm -hmm. So I would call it, uh, if if I can borrow an expression from from the tech world, it's like government as a service or a yeah. state as a service. Yeah. So. It's really a lot about focusing on the, uh, as much as possible, empowering in the individual, where, wherever he is, by the way, which I think um, right now is kind of revolutionary considering how many uh, hardening borders we are, we are seeing in the world and how uh, the, the way the world is changing. Uh, but again, having a focus on uh, helping people wherever they are, uh, work together and uh, facilitating their their uh, their life somehow, and help them work together. That's that's um, that's what connected me to to Estonia the most, and I think it's uh, really revolutionary. I I completely agree, and that's why I moved here originally as well, not just for your residency, but for the fact that Estonia seems to be ahead in thinking about how it serves its citizens and how it serves people outside its borders, like your residents. And others as well. It's uh it's quite a positive um, relationship, I think, and it, it and it leads to positive things in society and business in the economy, uh, and and so yeah, it's a great place to be. Although at the moment it's a little bit cold, so it's I think you're 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 good being in Italy right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, but I but I anyway I will be in Estonia, uh, as I said for for uh, startup days and for and for latitude. So by the way, this is also one way uh, to meet if you are uh, if you are happening to be there. So uh, let's grab a couple of drinks together. Fantastic! And startup day is next week, isn't it? In Tartu. Yes. And then yes. Um, latitude is in May, the end of May. So um, that gives people a bit more time, maybe if they're not already here for, for startup day next week. But yes, and also in May the weather will be better. Right? Yes, spring <laughs> Less will have than run. It is now. Yes. So Federica, before we finish, is there anything that you wanted to say that you haven't been able to say? Any any um any uh, additional things that people can find out about you or Emerald Foundry? Um, not really. I would just really would like to reinforce the message that uh, uh, rely on other people, get the help from other people in general. I mean, whether it's uh, from from us, of course, as uh, Emerald Foundry, this is our business uh, to help entrepreneurs. But in general, um, look outside, speak to people, and uh, and uh, make this community uh, even more alive than it is, because that's the strength of uh, of uh, the real strength of the residency is uh, exactly in uh, lying in the cooperation and in the uh, strength of the community. And I think that's a great place to finish. So. <laughs> So thank you so much, Federico, for, for joining me today on Conversations with E-Residents. Thank you, Hannah. And thank you, everyone listening. And I'm really excited to see what how 2023 goes for Emerald Foundry. So looking forward to following your story. Sure. And uh, looking forward to be having more news to share. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.